Megan, we're officially up and running. Like we are, we are here. Uh, Got next opened up with five preview episodes of all the major conferences. I got feedback, like just the educational piece of it. People like that. I got feedback on how cool our set was yeah, and everyone was cool. like, wow, that looked really cool. In addition to obviously all the content, we had great guests on as well that were we so insightful. Um, I learned a lot at least, which is uh, always fun to be a learning every single day. But here we are. We have made it to opening week. What the heck? Where has the time gone? And you and I were texting all day yesterday uh, just about the games that we're on, about how excited we were about things. And I do have a PSA. I do. I know you do. Get it. Get it. Okay, wait, first, before we get to the PSA. Yeah. This has got next. <laughs> Uh, purple makes everything better. That's why our set looked amazing. This has got next with Megan and Zora. And this is our women's basketball show that we created from the ground up. We're so excited about it. We're going to educate you, get you up to speed on all the top storylines. Megan's going to have power rankings. We're going to have an on her turf historical moment. We're going to tell you who's got next, who's impressing us, who's who's next up to be a star. And as the season goes along, we'll, we'll have stories. I just want people to understand where we're going. No, right. I think I think that was the PSA we had to start with. No, you you have a and now, now the season has started and everybody's already in a tizzy after less than twenty four hours of basketball. I mean, in a tizzy, what a phrase to describe it all. My PSA to everybody out there: Do not panic. It is the first week of November. If your team didn't play well. Don't panic. If your team was supposed to blow somebody out and they didn't, don't panic. If you thought one certain player was going to be a stud and they didn't play great, do not panic. This is the time of year where coaches are still trying to figure everything out. Players are trying to figure everything out. There are so many new pieces to new teams, transfers, freshmen. People have different roles this year. It takes time on the floor in competition to really iron those things out versus in practice or in secret scrimmages and exhibition games. Just not a lot of time. Take a deep breath. Do some deep breathing exercises. Yeah. Whatever it might be. Box breathing I hear is good for the lungs, calms the nervous system. But relax, folks. Think back to last year's aura when LSU lost to Colorado day one of the season and everybody was freaking out. LSU went to the Elite Eight. So don't hit the panic button just yet, folks. It's going well, to be okay. no one is no one is supposed to be where they want to get to now. That's not how this process works. I mean, a lot of times coaches break the season up into three parts. You've got non-conference, conference play, and then the postseason. And towards the end of conference play is where you really want to start clicking, which is end of February, beginning of March. So there's so much time and Megan, as you mentioned, it's new pieces, new systems, and it, now more than ever, it's going to take more time because of the way the transfer portal is set up. Every year, you've got completely new rosters that coaches have to figure out. And, you know, summer ball playing pickup is, is <laughs> very different than when uh, a coach puts a system in. So, yeah, I, I think uh, the first day was fun. And I have a PSA, too, Ooh. because you talked about the fact that, like, I'm thinking of the South Carolina – Michigan game, right? And it was it was Whoa. close. And people were like, oh, well, South Carolina is supposed to blow up Michigan. These are two power four conferences, right? Like, this is what we want our game to look like. When you have high-octane teams, they should be competitive. When you have – US, and we're going to get deeper into it. When you have USC and Ole Miss, two top 20 teams going at it, it's supposed to be close. That's what we want for our game, right? We want parity. We want competition. We don't want blowouts. Um, blowouts so. are boring. Blowouts start the letter B. I digress. Boring starts just... the letter B. <laughs> I like how we just went back and forth with PSAs. I promise this show isn't going to be all PSAs. We will dig into content, but those were important to start out. Let, let's let's get right into it. I think that was the perfect segue into a couple games that were top of mind for both of us. Um, one was both of them were actually played in Paris. <laughs> You've got, which is amazing. Love, love that, that for them. You also spent a ton of time in Paris this summer with the Olympics. So that's like your second home at this point, I feel like. It was cool to see some of the sites and be like, oh, I know where that is. It was, yeah, I'm happy for them. Uh, Juju Watkins has spent a lot. She was there for the Olympics. Now she's back. Um, but yeah, Ole Miss and USC played. And then we had UCLA and Louisville. Let's start with, with that first matchup, though. USC, who was ranked number three. And number 20, Ole Miss going at it. 
two point game. USC ends up winning. Um, but there was a lot of ups and downs. I mean, USC was up by double digits in the third quarter. Ole Miss comes to take the lead in the fourth quarter. I, from my point of view, it was free throws down the stretch that, that got it done for the Trojans. Layups and free throws, the two things at the end of tight games, coaches look back on and say, we left so much at the line or down low, easy lay-ins. It was a fascinating game. First off, love a good noon tip uh, on a Monday because like, I can get my done? TV on and have something to watch. Love that for us. <laughs> Secondly, the game started out really kind of sloppy. I was laughing and, and listening to Rebecca Lobo and Ryan Rucco do the game. They were like, ah, this wasn't a great start necessarily. It goes to show you, again, back to our previous PSA, why like at times it takes a while to adjust. Like you're getting into a new season. You're getting into game flow. It simply just takes time. They were dealing with time changes going halfway across the country, no matter – if anyone's traveled to Europe before, you understand how long it takes to adjust to the time change over there. But I was really intrigued by, we'll start with Juju Watkins, uh, her play early on. And Coach Yo was saying how the goal of this game headed into it was to try to make someone like Juju inefficient. Anytime you talk to a coach before a game and they're playing against a high volume scorer, or somebody who who can put up a ton of points per se, like an Enrique Agumbawale, for example, in the WNBA, you want to make her as inefficient as possible and try to make her shoot as many shots as possible. So early on, you saw a lot of different coverages on Juju. The moment she had the ball, they were throwing two at her. They were switching on ball screens, different things. She finally settled into a rhythm, going both right and left. Zora, I love her game. Like, she is so smooth and poised. And I got to get a thesaurus to come up with more words to describe how she plays. Those are the two that stick out. But her balance. You covered the NBA for years. You see how good those guards are in terms of getting into the paint, going off of two feet, and staying on balance, whether that's to score, to pass, whatever. Juju possesses all of those things at this level already as a sophomore. And her poise down the stretch was really impressive to me. Well, what I love, what and, and we're, we have a snippet from our media day interview. So I want to get to that because what I love is when players tell us what they worked on and then we get to see it in a game. So take a listen to this and, and then we'll react on the backside. What have you worked on this off season to continue elevating your game? Yeah, I think for me, the biggest thing was pace. Um, this summer, just slowing the game down a little bit for me and making the right reads. So that's that's been my main focus this summer and um, looking to translate it to the season. What's your favorite part of your game? It's so well-rounded, like you can play at all three levels, right? For you, if you could get to one spot or one move or one action, what are you trying to go? What's your favorite? I don't know. I've really been working on my post game as well. Mm. So oh. I think for me, maybe like a little fade away. So that would, I'm looking to really add that to my game to where it's something that I go to automatically. But I would say probably my Euro is pretty, it's pretty cool. How have you transitioned to mm -hmm. USC and what do you feel like this type of basketball that the Trojans play is? Yeah, I think the summer is so helpful for like that transition. So now that we've started official practices, I feel like very comfortable. Um, I think the biggest thing is like, I have to like play defense a lot more now. So it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm not just a helper, but like I have to guard mm. guards on the perimeter. I have to be able to switch one through five hedging. So a lot of new like defensive terminology yeah. that I'm really excited to hone in on as the season goes on. But I just say, a, a lot faster pace, more freedom with the ball, um, and just honestly just playing basketball and not being very robotic. So that's the biggest difference I've seen. What can fans expect to see from this USC team in particular? Um, I think we just have a lot of talent and like we're, our, our bench is so deep and I'm really excited to see how, um, you know, we rise up to the occasion on, on each game. So I would just say we're super stacked and a bunch of people are bought into to what we're trying to do and that's when the national championship so so juju talking about one the patience that's what you talked about right like the balance getting her teammates involved that's something she really worked on but then the post game we saw that in the matchup with Ole Miss um so I love that and of course it's not all come together yet she did have a number of turnovers which I think she'll she'll continue to work on um we got a in that snippet we had Kiki Iria Fenn Tell me what she, I, she fits seamlessly into this Trojan system offense, both her and Juju finished with double doubles. So Juju had 27 points, 10 rebounds. Kiki had 22 points and 13 rebounds 
in her debut back home in a Southern Cal jersey. I got to tell you, there were times yesterday where I literally had my jaw dropped to the floor off of some things that Kiki Ariefen was able to do. She's physical down low in the paint. She gets excellent positioning. Her ability to tip the ball to herself, uh, especially when, you know, off offensive rebounds, and she's just so strong going back up with it. You nailed it when you said her game reminded you of Asia Wilson. Like it's only sometimes, only sometimes. No, right. Laura, I feel like you're batting at least 900. We're putting you in the Hall of Fame with your comparisons in general. But Kiki fit seamlessly into this system. It felt like also it's going to take a little bit of time just for everyone to get used to playing with each other. Um, I thought Tal- uh, Talia von Olafen also coming and playing point, and she got into some foul trouble early. And that hurt her, I think, from getting into a really good rhythm. And I was impressed with Lindsey Gottlieb playing so many different players, um, especially in that first half. Freshman coming in, um, Avery Howell off the bench, uh, Kaylee Heckle off the bench. We're going to get into Kennedy Smith and uh, how much of a stud she is. I'm excited to see what she does this year. But what we saw from this Trojans team is they have the talent. That's not going to ever be in question. It's just a matter of getting that chemistry going, playing with each other. They have so much talent. They just have to learn when to push and pull amongst each other, and that's going to be a key moving down the stretch. Before we put a button on this game, I do want to give a shout-out to Coach Yo and Ole Miss Oof. and K.K. Deans, K.K. Deans from Ole Miss. I mean, she missed most of last season – with an ACL injury, Mm -hmm. and she comes into this one, first game of the season, on the road, overseas, and hit big shots against a top-five team. Uh, Ole Miss, by the way, defensively, like they forced 26 turnovers. They were to capitalize early on. Their defense got them back in the game. KK Dean's knocking down shots, got them back in the game. Any team that defends at a high level early on has a great chance of making deep runs in March. you got to get stops at some point. Coach yeah. team is in a great position. I'm excited to see what they do in the SEC. Um, that, that was a tight game. That could have gone any way with 10 seconds to go. And that's what we want. So uh, I think it was a, a great showing by both teams. Coach Yo tweeted after the game. She said missed opportunity. But uh, I, I do think her team played really, really well against a tough stack. I mean, Juju told us that the depth of this team was going to be one of the storylines. And we saw it in game one. Okay. Game two in Paris. UCLA. Number five preseason, number 17, Louisville. UCLA comes out with the win without Kiki Rice. I thought that was just a a big part of it. You're missing your point guard, your leader, and you've still got other people that step up. I mean, London Jones, right? And we'll get to Lauren Betts, but just the other role players um, were really impressive to me to be able to pull out that victory without Kiki Rice. Uh, on the broadcast, I believe they said Kiki Rice has a shoulder injury. She's day to day. It's nothing too serious, but it was a little shocking when when you watch UCLA. And Kiki Rice has come to UCLA as a freshman two years ago, and she's played ever since. So you're not used to almost seeing her not on the floor. So a big adjustment that UCLA had to make. I was impressed, like you said, about some of those role players um, that came in. How about how good it was to me a Gardner coming in off the bench, Janiah Barker, like. Huge when you have depth and Corey Close can go to her bench, bring somebody off who can put up some scoring power, who can rebound, defend all of those little things that have power five experience. Uh, London Jones, I love her game. She had 13 points. Three threes. So, I mean, shots. huge timely threes too. Yeah. That were just good big. Anytime you go against Jeff Walls in Louisville, like he plays fast. They, they're going to defend at a high level. They make you play much faster than you want to play. That UCLA was able to settle into a rhythm at times. They still had 22 turnovers. Uh, but Lauren Betts probably was my favorite player I watched yesterday. Mm. I mean, Zora. Lauren Betts is a 6'7 playmaking center. She is balanced. You can throw six people at her, even the manager on the team, and she's still going to find a way to perfectly pass it into your shooting pocket on the opposite corner. She's so smart. I love her motor. Her IQ is off the charts. She's so talented down low. Obviously, we can talk about getting the deep paint positioning. We can talk about how she can has great touch. She can finish over both shoulders, but that passing ability and her IQ to not get rushed just like blew my mind, and I enjoyed watching it very much so. That's finished with 18 points, 13 rebounds, four blocks. And you talked about her passing ability, had a couple assists as well. This game, 
had four ties and 13 lead changes. I just, I, I guess I just want to play up the fact that our game has so much parity in it and it's not played on paper. You've got to watch. And, and, and I, I, I mean, almost 19 million people are, you want to talk about last season in the championship game, right? Between South Carolina and Iowa, people are watching. I just want to convince them and, you know, suggest that they continue to do that. That's all. Well, how about this? Uh, more viewers in the world series for the women's national championship game last year. We love, love that. It. Yeah. It's exciting. It's good times. Hey, I also want to point out, by the way, Lauren Betts, five assists. She led her team in assists. She's six, seven folks. I, I love Lauren Betts game. Also, she gave me my current Starbucks order that I now uh, go to. What is it? Media day. It is a, um, the apple crisp oat milk macchiato. And I was a little on the fence about it, but she convinced me to try it and tried it. And she was right. So and you can get hot or iced. Trust. say it again. You get a hot or iced hot. Oh, I'm not really an iced coffee girl, which is, I feel I like coffee period. So is that your remember. superpower? <laughs> Maybe that's why I don't do early mornings. When our producer Natalie <laughs> said, you want to record this at 9 AM? I'm like, I got to tell, but tell the people you are, uh, you're on, you're in your bubbly era. I feel like that's going to be your new, every single time I see you. Probably reach out to me the lime. Basically I'm a, I'm a ginger ale. Like I like carbonated things. Um, and so this is my carbonation without the sugar. And Megan was like, Zora, I didn't know you were, uh, you know, she thought I was drinking Sprite. So you're drinking Sprite. I was like, I mean, no judgment, but I just didn't take you for a Sprite drinker. Bubbly. Bubbly. Yeah. Well, it's bubbly, folks. It's no yeah. soda, just carbonation. It's carbonation. It. Yeah. It's it gets me through the days. Some <laughs> people do coffee. I do bubbly in the morning. Well, I can't believe you don't drink coffee, but um, you know, no, never like we don't if you like if you come visit us, you would have to go to Starbucks in the morning because we don't have a coffee maker here. Kevin doesn't drink coffee My either. Doesn't drink coffee. No. I mean, Patrick doesn't drink coffee, but he it has like the taste buds of like a five year old, so it's not surprising. <laughs> Yeah. So you SOL, like when we used to, like, we live close to my parents. Now when we used to live far away, they would bring their own, like the coffee that you can put in water. Cause sorry. Instinct. You made your parents instant coffee. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. Unless they wanted daughter to are you? <laughs> we don't have coffee makers. Sorry. Well, thank goodness. Lauren Betts gave me my Starbucks order. Right. So right. Yeah. I don't know what to get. Uh, Megan, you, uh, you have power rankings, which you will have. <laughs> Every single week, and I'll give my t- two cents on them. You gave our producer some power rankings like maybe 24 hours ago, and now you already want to change them. So let's no. get the, the the initial rankings up there, and then tell us how quickly things change in your mind. Well, things change very quickly. South Carolina, and we're going to – you know what? Actually, we can get into it now. South Carolina coming off of a championship season where they went undefeated. Yeah. They lose Camilla Cardoso – in the postseason to the WNBA, they pretty much return everybody else. I mean, Malaysia full Wiley is coming off the bench door. That's how stacked it's this so is. So wild to me. Yeah. Insane. South they're Carolina. Double. They're like star freshman comes off the bench. I, I, there's so much talent. You could literally, it doesn't matter what five you play. It feels like they're going yeah. to, to be the best players on the floor. That being said, it just takes some time. People are in new roles uh, to adjust to life without Camilla Cardoso. Who, who was so heavily involved in that team and offense defense last year just takes a little bit of time. It's almost like that first game. There's also the pressure of, Hey, we are the best team in the nation. Um, and Michigan, by the way, is a really good defensive team. Yes. They're young. Yes. They only had four players return from last season, but Kim Barnes Rico preaches defense. That is one of the cornerstones of her program ball screen defense. You saw how Michigan was packing the paint in that game a lot of the time, which made it difficult for South Carolina to move the ball inside out. I was really impressed with the freshmen. There's a lot of talent on that Michigan team. Don't be surprised that Michigan played as well as they did, but it started defensively because there was still some sloppiness on both sides, but Michigan's a team that forces you to slow it down in the half court and South Carolina likes to push pace and play fast. South Carolina's going to be fine. I still have uh, no issues. Say, you're not saying all this to say you're taking South Carolina off of number one, are No, you? they're number one. Okay, thank you. I would say. Yeah. No, no, they're number one. I just <laughs> want to give context. So, are, you know how I like to over-explain and, you know, really just make sure we hit, yeah. we hit all the points. Um, UConn has not played yet. They will play Neither later Texas. this week as of this. Texas Texas plays, like, at the end Sunday. It's their first game of the season. It's crazy. Uh, but they're going to be – Big to watch. USC, number three, they have to play better, and they know they have to play better. And that's just going to come from getting reps together. 
And then finally, number four, Texas, number five, Notre Dame. They were in action yesterday past the century mark, 105-61 against Mercyhurst. My goodness gracious. Um, I'm actually excited to see Notre Dame in person. I call their game on Sunday against Purdue. Yay, you're going to love it. Well, you, I know you've already been to practice. You've talked to. Yeah, you're going to love me. No, Ivy is amazing. Um, yeah, she's great. Yeah. She's I'm great. excited to, to so see. So Katie them. Gerald's. Shout out to Purdue. Oh, Katie we love us and Katie Gerald's. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you. But with Notre Dame, their guards, like between Citron and Olivia Miles and Hannah Hidalgo, like that's that's a trio right there. Um, so right well, now, there's your power ranking. Mark with only seven players. Like they have a number of players that are injured to start the season, including Maddie Westwood. I mean, they had, I believe, five players that couldn't suit up. Um, so just for them, I mean, the conditioning and the shape that they have to be in to sustain – that type of play without a deep bench, uh, kudos to them. So what part did you change? You didn't change anything. Yeah. Well, now that we talked through it, I'm not going to change anything. Oh, I, maybe oh, like, the- the- I maybe would have switched Texas and USC. It's just so early. This is why, you know. Don't, you're overthinking. We overthink. I so like this. Overthink. South yeah, why, why? Because of how USC played against Ole Miss? You, no, because they haven't played. Texas hasn't played yeah, yet. Texas hasn't played yet. You're right. They, that's just – that's recency bias. And you yeah, know you what? Do, no. We don't want to – we don't want to give in to recency bias. Yeah. Okay. Keeping it as is. Permanent stamp it. Boom. I – yeah. I agree. Right. It's, th- this is probably going to be the hardest top five that you do because you – like preseason top – you're you're projecting off of how you think players are – they haven't shown you anything. Right. No. And so, yeah, of course, like a South Carolina, you take the fact that they were undefeated last season, won a national championship or returned most of the team. Okay. So then they go to number one, right? Like it's, I don't, it's hard to do the preseason rankings because yeah. it's, you just don't know. You don't know. So there you go, folks. That's what it is. And if you have any issues, well, just wait till next season. Let's see, or next week. Let's see what, uh, what plays out over the next couple of days. Every week, we are going to have an on-her-turf moment. It may be that we are giving flowers to someone. It may be this day in history, or maybe we just want to get you up to speed and educate you on the background of the game that we love so much. So today, to start off the season, we thought we'd take a big-picture look at who's won NCAA championships by conference. Which conference has the most titles? SEC at the top. And Megan, your beloved Big Ten. Uh, Shout out to our our guest, Carolyn Peck, for getting that one Big Ten Conference Championship with Purdue. You you, Shout out to Zora Stevenson for doing the research on this, by the way. Um, You texted me this yesterday, and I was like, what? Jaw dropped. SEC, not surprising. Big East, obviously. UConn. um, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC. Look, Big Ten Conference. A lot of people give the Big Ten Conference a hard time because that's the argument. How many Final Fours have you been to? How many titles have you won? Iowa went to the Final Four the last two years, fell short in the National Championship game. The Final Four numbers are starting to be on the uptick. What's going to be fascinating, the Big Ten, could they get a national title this year? USC, UCLA, both teams that as the season goes on, they will continue to get better and develop together. Uh, I'm curious to see how how this changes after this year. But I know Big Ten in last place uh, amongst the – we're going to go Power Six conferences. Not uh, not what I was expecting, although I think I knew that, but my brain just must have – Right. Your mayor bias. Yeah, my, my, my mayor, mayor bias. Big Ten. <laughs> I know, Zora, Zora, is, um, Zora is the mayor of many things, <sighs> just in life in general. Um. But now that you have been to Big Ten country, we've shown you all the ropes, all the places to go. You have. You got your spots. You're going to be the next mayor of the Big Ten. Well, I'll try. Maybe deputy mayor. I just, just more background on that, you know, all the titles. SEC is highly because of Tennessee and now the emergence of of South Carolina as a Mm -hmm. consistent contender. You mentioned the Big East is all UConn, Big 12, Baylor. Yeah. Uh, Pac-12, Stanford. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's just, I just wanted to to say that. Hey, can we tell the people your nugget on Tennessee? Oh, I think you said it in our previews, but say it again because yeah. It's so good. We can say it again. 
Did you know Tennessee is the only program in women's basketball history since the inception of the NCAA tournament in 1982 that has made the NCAA tournament every single year? That is insane. Yeah. That's like 40 plus years. My math's not good, but I feel like the 80s, I feel like the 80s were only 30 years ago, but they're really 40 years ago because like I'm 30 we're and I'm born in the 90s. 20s now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. But that just goes to show you how good Tennessee has been, the consistency in that program. Um, yeah. Since 1982, every single, the only program to make to the NCAA tournament every single time. It also goes to show you how hard it is to get to the NCAA tournament. I think a lot of fans take for granted when, um, like programs consistently go to the tournament. It's so hard. Like, like you played, I played like it's, you get into conference play. It's a marathon. And that's why you can't panic right now because the season is so long players. If you didn't play a ton in your first or second game, like don't panic. Things happen. Injuries happen. Lineups change rhythms, um, come and go with certain players. It's just a long season and natty championships are hard to get. Agreed. 30 plus games. And a lot can happen in that time. Okay, we're getting to the end of the show, but uh, this is called Got Next. So we got to tell you who's got next. I say that you do your USC Got Next, and then I'll do the Michigan Got Next. Uh, well, Got Next for our girl Kennedy Smith. I loved watching her play for USC against Ole Miss yesterday. She's six one. Her body is incredible in terms of her strength, her balance. Like, she can defend. Freshmen can't play defense normally. And Kennedy Smith did a great job. Are you talking about us? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we just I mean, play. like, we, well, well, what do they call it? Three and no D? That's uh, a. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? It's basic math. If you make a three and then you give up two, you're still plus one. Um, don't Should've don't do that job. at home, kids. Play some defense. Don't <laughs> don't be like us. Uh, but Kennedy Smith coming in. I was so impressed in general with the freshmen. And I'll let you get into Silas Swords because I do want to give a PSA on freshmen. But Kennedy Smith uh, starting as a freshman in Paris. She's been working out a ton with Juju Watkins. Like you see it on social media everywhere. Uh, similar build, like Juju 6'2", Kennedy Smith 6'1". Love how poised she was early on. I'm always impressed when freshmen or rookies, like Rakia Jackson, for example, in the WNBA, was so poised in her rookie season. Doesn't get rushed, and I think the same goes for Kennedy Smith. Yeah, and, and you talked about her and Juju working out. They were actually rivals in high school. Kennedy Smith grew up in Chino, California, and now I think it's a full circle moment that they get to play together. I will say this, though. like My best friend was my high school rival and we played together in college and we're two peas in a pod now. Are so we shouting out Maggie right now? I'm talking about Maggie Lyon. Okay. Shout out Maggie <laughs> Lyon. She went to New Trier. I went to Layla Academy and now she's my bestie. So um Kennedy Smith and Juju Watkins might have the same destiny. I love that. Yeah. yeah. And you and Maggie were different years, right? Yeah, I was older. See? Same thing yeah. with uh Kennedy and Juju. Look, look at you setting up this setting up friends. for the rest of your life. Setting up friendships. <laughs> Okay, let's go to Michigan and yes. Silas Swords. I had a group chat with my best friend who I played with. Um, shout out to Kelsey Harris. Oh, and Kelsey um, Harris rocks. We were she was like, Who's this freshman? And it's Silas Swords from Ontario, Canada. By way of Long Island, she did go to prep school in the US. 27 points, 12 boards in her college debut against the number one team in the country. You talk about no fear, confidence, her comfortability. And to me, it was the ability to get her own shot off. Mm -hmm. It's one thing if you're catch and shoot, you're coming off screens or something like that, but she was creating. And, and that's hard to do, especially against a tenacious defensive team like South Carolina. I don't think she's going to be a secret for long. She'll be on scouting reports moving forward. This is a Michigan team that has a number of freshmen, multiple McDonald's All-Americans now on the team. And I told my husband, I was like, you know, my husband's Canadian. He's from Toronto. So I was like, have you heard of Silas Soares? He's like, of course. She played on the Canadian national team. So she right. did play um, at the Olympics. And, uh, yeah, people up north are – uh, aware of her game and and now we're gonna see what she's got down here so shout out to her especially on a huge stage she performed she's got hoops in her blood her dad's a g-league coach actually uh as well so uh tons of basketball lineage in the swords family played like you mentioned long island lutheran is one of the top high school programs in the country uh, not too far from where i live uh in new york 
But to your point, to have be with the Yankee, like you're not, I'm not for the record, you're a New Yorker. I won't call you that. It's fine. Oh no, I'm not a New Yorker. I'm a fake. I'm a total bandwagoner. New York Yankees were in the World Series. My husband did grow up a, a Yankees fan, so this is more in support of him. Um, it went with my outfit, and I just kind of rocked and rolled with it. There's only so many things that fit me now, Zora, as you know. So um, this the hat hats fit. I'm sure hats are safe. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. If hats are safe, hats will continue to fit. <laughs> hats will. You when you get pregnant, folks, no. don't worry. You don't have to get rid of any of your hats. <laughs> um, but Silas Swords watched her at the McDonald's All American game. She's got such tremendous upside, and Olivia Olson as well was a McDonald's All American. This was the highest ranked recruiting class that Michigan's been able to bring in. Kim Barton Rico is a great coach. It's not going to take long for her clearly to uh, adjust to the college level. Which brings me to a point, Zora. Watching games yesterday. I'm fascinated by how quickly freshmen have adjusted to the college level. In the past, it was normal for freshmen to come in not quite ready to compete at the college level because they're going against players that are four years older than them, bigger, faster, stronger, that have more experience. Now you're seeing Silas Swords, Kennedy Smith, Joyce Edwards on uh, South Carolina, come on in, uh, Sarah uh, Strong from UConn, that our bodies are ready for the next level. Their IQs are ready. They can play with so much pace. And I started wondering, like, why is this now happening? It's a trend we're seeing. But now at the AAU level, there's so much more opportunity at a younger age. So it used to just be like you played for an AAU team. There were a couple of great tournaments. You had the McDonald's All-American game, and those were kind of where the best players got to get some experience. But now you have So many different AAU circuits. You have EYBL, Under Armour, Adidas, and these are elite circuits. You have the McDonald's All-American Games. You have Chipotle Nationals. Like, there's so many more opportunities at an elite level, even to go play overseas with an elite team. Um, I look at USA Basketball expanding with its 3x3 and and the under-23, 22, 18 teams all the way down, where these players now are getting more experience, they're specializing earlier, and they're training more. So all in all, it's a perfect storm adding up to the talent. They come into college. They're ready to play. It's become a guard-oriented game, and these players on the perimeter all have guard-like skills, which when you get to the next level, I think one of the biggest adjustments I had to get used to was like handling the ball better because like you can handle it in high school. They're not good enough to guard you. But once you get to college, everyone's good enough to guard you, so these players have such better ball handling skills. I'm blown away by the freshmen coming in. Uh, I'm high on this next generation. It goes to show you how good the women's game is. Uh, but I'm fascinated also by how quickly they're adjusting. Cause that is something over the last five years, maybe we've started to see so many more freshmen being impact players right away. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. I also think it speaks to the evolution, evolution of facilities, training, weight room, film, all the things that maybe we, you and I didn't do in high school that are now being done at the prep level. Nutrition. Like people are like paying attention to what they're eating. Yeah. Can you imagine? Geez, like, you know, maybe they're drinking bubblies in high school where we were <laughs> drinking Sprite. You know, I don't know. Ginger uh, ale. I yeah. mean, ugh. So, uh, yeah, season's underway. Still a lot more to go. Uh, Megan has honed down on her PSA of don't panic. I agree with that. Um, mm-hmm. And we'll just see where it takes us. And we'll see how often her power rankings are going to change. <laughs> we got to keep the initial one and see just how much it changes. It's not even like on you. It's just how much like things can change throughout a season. We like seeing data. We like data points. And why not just create some every week and we can have a great discussion about the parity my favorite word, in college basketball. Got next. We'll see you next Tuesday.